Hello, my name is Brian Dick. I'm a software engineer, and this is my YouTube tutorial series on solving the HackerRank challenges for the interview preparation kit. Currently, we are going over arrays, and this is actually the final problem of arrays in the preparation kit. This is the only problem that we've encountered so far that is of difficulty hard, and I will admit it is a little hard. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Starting with a one indexed array of zeros and a list of operations for each operation, add a value to each of the arrays, array elements between the two given indices, inclusive. Once all operations have been performed, return the maximum value in the array. For example, if n is equal to 10 and queries are equal to 1, 5, 3, 4, 8, 7, and 6, 9, 1, the queries are interpreted as follows. A is the first element, which is the in entry point into the indices, the start of the indices. B is the end of the indices, inclusive. And K is the value that we are placing there. We're adding those values of K. So let's look at how this works here. So again, this is a one-based index instead of zero-based index like all programming languages use. Um, well, I guess not all. There are some people out there that are crazy and they don't like zero-based uh, zero indexing. But for the vast majority of commonly used languages, they are all zero-based indexed. But for this problem, we are using one-based indexing. So we are going to go to the values of k between these indices with both of them being inclusive. So we're going to go all the way to, so the first values, we have 1 and 5. We're going to start at 1, go all the way to 5, and we're going to add 3 to it. The next one is 4 to 8. Between indices 4 and indice 8, we're going to play 7. From 6 to 9, we add 1. So starting at 6, we add 1, and we add 1 all the way until 9. At the very end, we return the largest value. In this case, it's found at index 4 or index 5, which is the value of 10. And then we return that max. So we are supposed to complete the function array manipulation in the editor below. Array manipulation has the following parameters, int the number of elements in the array, int queries q3, a two-dimensional array of queries where each queries sub i contains three integers a, b, and k. It returns a single integer, the maximum value in the resultant array. Okay, so this is the first hard problem that we've gone over. And I don't think that it is necessarily hard to understand what the problem is or even necessarily how to solve it. The problem I think most people probably run into is making this process efficient. So I'll go ahead and go straight to full screen here. So one thing that you'll notice is in the example that they give, they actually create an array. And then this array not only is here, but they also fill it in with each step, the way that they describe that the array manipulation should occur. And that's fine. However, this creates a, when you do this algorithmically, it creates a function that is m times n squared complexity, where n is the size of the array and m is the number of queries. When you create this type of dynamic, this is just shy of uh, order n cubed. Uh, I think it's the only reason it's just shy is because uh, one of our constraints is that our m is smaller than our n by about two magnitudes. So it is slightly better than being n cubed, but it is still horribly inefficient, which I'm sure causes you to fail a lot of the test cases when you submit it. The more efficient solution is a smarter one, and I'm going to explain it on a notepad uh, to make sense of it. So let's say we have our three queries, one, five, and three, four, eight, and seven and six, nine, and one. And then we have our array, which is 10 digits. Okay, so we have our array that is 10 digits. 
And this is uh, one based indexing. So this here is one, this here's two and so on and so forth. Okay, so the way that they do it, as you can see again, is they go ahead and add three to every single place it is. And then once they get to the very end of all of these queries, they just search the array and find the largest value. And that is a valid solution. It is just horribly inefficient. So here's what we're gonna do instead. We are going to add a three here. And then we're going to go to this index plus one, so to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we are going to subtract the value we added everywhere else. Because for all of these values here, this three exists. So all of these values we can think of as having three if we were adding it linearly across. And I'll explain what I mean by that later. But let me finish this example first. So then we have four to eight, we're adding seven. So we have zero, one, two, or sorry, one, two, three, four, because it's one based indexing, uh, seven. And then we go all the way to nine, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here we're going to subtract seven because that's eight plus one. Then we have six through nine, we get one. So we're going to go uh, four, five, six. We're going to add one to this index. So that makes it a negative two. And then we're going to go all the way to 10 and we're going to place a negative one. Now, we have done all of this in linear time. We go through a single pass. We do not iterate over the array at all. We simply do constant time operations where we have exactly two operations that we have to perform, the adding and subtracting. Now, all we do at the end to find the maximum value is we add along this array, checking with every value we add whether or not this array has increased, the, this addition has increased the max value or not. So we start off with negative infinity. So we'll do negative inf <clears throat> is our max. So max and our cur. So our current is zero. When we go to this first value, we say, okay, this first value is three. So we're gonna add three to our current. Is our current greater than our max? In this case, it is. So our max now is three. We go three, add this, nothing happens. We add this, nothing happens. We get to 10, or I mean to seven. Seven, add this to our cur. Our cur is now 10. Our max is sitting at three. 10 is greater than three. So we increase our max to 10. And we keep going. We add zero, nothing happens. We add a negative two. Now our cur drops down to eight. Is eight bigger than 10? No, nothing happens. Go to zero, nothing happens. Zero, nothing happens. Negative seven, we go down to one. Now we say, well, our current is one. Is one bigger than 10? No, so we keep going. Go to the end, the last one is negative one. So our current becomes zero. Zero is less than 10, so nothing happens. We have now gone to the end of our array and we have a max value of 10. So now all we do is we iterate through a single time to place these values in the proper places. And then we iterate a second time to, uh, to count it up. So we have 2n for the, or we know we have n times m complexity instead of n time or m times n squared. We now just have m times n. So we've dropped down a magnitude of n, and this is, becomes much, much better. So let's get to coding this problem now. Oh, wait, no, no, it's not even m times n. It is just m plus n time, because we go through it, the m queries, and those are all constant time operations that we do for those queries. So it's m plus n. So this is order O of n. But yes, so that's nice. Okay. 
let's get to coding the solution. So we're going to start off with a long uh, max. We're going to set this equal to int underscore min. I think that's the right thing. Or is it min underscore int? Int. Hmm, this is making me worry. Wait, let me do long underscore min. Is that a thing? I think it's int underscore min. Oh, whatever. We'll figure it out. So hopefully that'll just work. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and have our uh, long cur val it's equal to zero, just like we had it in our notepad. Oops. So like we have in our notepad, we have a max and a cur. And then we're going to set our, we're going to have a vector that we're actually placing these things in. So we have vector of ints. Uh, we're just going to call this temp because this thing gets thrown away as soon as we leave this function. So we're going to set this equal. We're going to have to use our constructor vector of int of size n. So we are creating a vector called of ints called temp that is size n to begin with. Then we're going to start the logic side. So um, first, we're going to want a for loop where we're going to say for int, or sorry, vector of ints. We'll call this query in queries. So we're going to iterate for every value in this vector of vectors. We get a vector. Uh, query. And then we're going to say our int uh, start index is equal to query sub zero and minus one. So our actual array is or, or our vector is zero base indexed. The values we're given from these queries are one based indexed. So we have to subtract one for the offset on all of these. Int end index is equal to query sub one minus one. And same logic there. And then we have an int val is equal to query sub two or our k. And that's what we're going to be adding and subtracting. So then for all of those, we're going to first place it at our starting index. So we're going to say temp index at start index is plus equals val. Then we are going to check if uh, end index plus one is still less than um, query, oh wait, no, not query, uh, temp dot size. So if it's still less than, then we're fine um, to just subtract from end index. So we'll go temp, wait, is it less than size or is it less, or is it just simply, wait, hold up. This is inclusive, so we're going to this spot. So if my array size was, two, and I'm wanting to go into index, end index of one, end index of one would be valid, but it index of, val okay, no, so we just want to do this. We don't need that plus one, it'll just be this. Because if inde index is one, then if the size is one, we can't do that because there's only the zero. If it is size of two, we can do that. Uh, so this would be valid. Okay, cool, that works. So then we do temp of end index. Oh wait, but it's plus one. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Ignore me for a second. Because we have to go to the place where this ends after where this value no longer occurs. So end index plus one 
and we're going to say minus equals that val. So we can only do this if this is a valid index. We're going to subtract because there is the edge case that the end index plus one is already outside of the array bounds. So we just need to check for that. Um, and then once we get through this for loop, we just iterate through for int val in uh, temp. We're going to have a outside of here. Oh, wait, we know we already have a long current. Yeah. So we're going to say for each of these, curval plus equals val. And if curval is greater than our current max, then we set max equal to curval. Then by the time we get out of this for each loop, we should have the actual max and we return max. So let's go ahead and run this and see all the mistakes I made. Oh, what do you know? I actually passed. Now let's submit this code and see if we pass all the other test cases. And there you have it. We have passed all of the arrays uh, problems in the interview preparation kit now. So if this video helps you pass this problem, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this content and would like to see more, I am planning on going through the entire interview preparation kit found on HackerRank. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. And if you need further, uh, further explanation for why this solution works, uh, just ask your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.